My name is Heriberto Ayala Jr. Everybody knows me as Tito. And my name is Craig Merck. And we're talking to you today from the California, Nevada JATC training facility. And in this series of videos, we're going to talk to you about some basic personal protective equipment and how to do inspections of your equipment in the field every day. All companies and all contracts require basic personal protective equipment. One of the most ubiquitous pieces of equipment is safety glasses. Safety glasses protect our eyes from dust and flying debris. All safety glasses must meet Z87.1 criteria. In addition, if you wear prescription safety glasses, you have to wear the attached side shields. Uh, on glasses, make sure they are approved. They have the Z87 stamp on it. Uh, glasses like these that you buy at the convenience store or that are designer glasses most of the time don't have that that marking on the frame so just make sure that the glasses have that marking on the frame in order to, for it to be approved in the type of work that we do on a day-to-day -day basis other contracts may require you to wear gloves we want to wear gloves to protect our hands anytime we deal with abrasive thorny or very cold conditions Gloves should be tight fitting. Most have a cuff. We don't ever want to wear a loose gauntlet type glove, especially when we're chipping. Yeah, so on the gloves, just remember, uh, follow your company policies. If it's mandatory, wear the gloves. I mean, especially with trees like palms, uh, locusts, anything with thorns, it's there to protect you. Also, a good recommendation is when you're filing your, your chainsaw, Make sure you're wearing gloves. In case your hand ever slips or goes through, you don't get that cut and you have that extra added protection. So wear them, they're for your protection. Hearing protection is required, not just by common sense, but also by the Z133. Anytime we're exposed to sound levels of 85 decibels or higher. Hearing protection is either the foam crushable type of earplugs you can insert or earmuffs that are attached to a hard hat or are a standalone piece of personal protective equipment. It's important to remember that these go over your ears and should be cleaned and inspected regularly. So yeah, so on the, on the ones that are the earmuffs that go on your hard hat, just remember also make sure they're E-rated, they're not cracked, they're sealed, and they're sealing proper to your ears. Just make sure that you use them because right now the effects you might not it might not affect you right now but as you start getting older and you start seeing that effect that you can't hear things so that's what they're there you know we work with loud machinery the chippers uh, chainsaw blowers they jump over that 85 decibel so that's why we have to wear them so wear them they're for your protection okay so we're going to jump into the helmets now Craig, if you want to start on that one. Yeah, for people that have worked in the residential commercial sector, they may be used to wearing a Class C hard hat. But in the electrical industry, we have to make sure that we wear a Class E hard hat. Inside of our hard hat, there will be a label with a lot of identifying information. The manufacturer of that hard hat, when the hard hat was made, and what class it meets. Class E hard hats are required any time that we work within 10 feet of high voltage overhead conductors or any kind of conductor. A Class E hard hat is easy to spot because it has no holes and no ventilation of any kind. Yeah, so also remember on these, they put them through studies, the way they put glasses. They usually put them like, it's like a tub of water that they put in there. They throw the wand in there with electricity. And if that current passes, even though it's sealed and it's not approved, but you know, make sure the ones that are ventilated, that electricity is going to pass on there. So that, that's also part of a, an inspection that we have to do. So like Craig said, just make sure it has that, that sticker in there. Uh, another good idea to do is that when they give you your helmets, follow the recommendation of each company. Companies make different types of helmets. So sometimes they put it for five, seven years, but it doesn't matter on the first day. If you're climbing up there and it falls and it gets damaged, it has to be replaced. So another good idea to so get those dates on there when they give you your, your hard helmet. It's good with the permanent marker like Craig did on this one, the day that they give it to you and then you can start counting the years off for of that. Also with the inspection on these helmets, the way you want to do the, your, your inspection is that you always want to look out the outside, make sure there's no cracks, anything like that that's damaged. Uh, discoloration, that's an identification that it's been in the elements of the sun and it's deteriorated the helmet. Another thing is uh, we want to compress it, and if you compress it and it goes back to its normal shape, 
then that's what you want to see on these helmets. Once you press it and you see that it's not going back and you start seeing cracks on it, that means it's time to retire the helmet. Another thing that you want to do is you want to check all your connections, your stitchings, uh, all the connections, make sure that they're in working order, that they're connecting properly, that they're tying. So when you're up in a tree, it's holding your, your, your helmet in place and it doesn't fall back on you. So just remember, do that, that inspection on those helmets. And like Craig said, it has to be a class E rate. Okay. Anything else you want to add for the helmet? No. Should we talk about chaps? Yes. Let's talk about chaps. So let's jump into the chaps. So with chaps, uh, there's different types of chaps. These are the, the pants ones. These are made by a uh, clogger. Very good chaps. Good company that makes uh, chaps. There's other ones that you could put on and on that have clips. So they, these, we'll talk about these since we are, these are the ones that we're demonstrating. So on the chaps, what you want to do your inspection is make sure that there's no worn, no tears, anything like that. Um, also, you know, make sure that they're not full of dirt, debris, oil, gas, chemicals, anything that could affect the fibers inside and won't give you that added protection. Another thing is that, you know, when you give them the maintenance, make sure you follow the labels on there, how to wash them, not to dry them in the dryer. It has all the descriptions here on these labels to let you know how to give it the proper maintenance. Also, another thing is that each individual is it's different in height and all that. Make sure those chaps are giving you that protection from the hips all the way down to the ankles. Make sure it gives you that protection. Uh, another thing is that it has to have the, the label for the ANSI. If it's not on there, it could be a ticket for Moshe. So just remember that it has to have that tag on there whenever you wear these chaps, okay? Craig, anything else you want to add? Just basically to cover that, uh, as Tito stated, there's chaps that are made that you can put on over a regular pair of work pants. And then there's chaps that are made that are integrated into a pair of work pants. Those chaps have a protective Kevlar fiber weave inside in the front and the most likely areas for chainsaw impact. The way that they work is when the saw comes in contact, those fibers pull into the moving chain of the chainsaw and bind up the sprocket mechanism and they actually stop the chain from rotating around the bar. You wanna make sure that the stitching and everything is in place that holds that Kevlar fiber in place. If you feel lumps or baggy spots or all of that Kevlar fiber has fallen down below the knee, it's time to replace those chaps. With the UL tag, the UL will, uh, Underwriters Laboratory tag will uh, indicate that these are a pair of chainsaw protective chaps. There are work aprons made for running big weed eaters that look like chaps, but they don't have any of the safety features that a pair of actual chaps has. All right, perfect. Okay, so now from there, we're gonna jump into the boots. So your boots are also PPE. On the boots, it's very important make sure that it has a good traction, minimum of a quarter inch heel, that they are shoelaced, and that they're over the ankle. So remember, over the ankle, shoelace, good traction, and a minimum of a quarter inch heel. Um, also, if they're uh, steel toe, we cannot use them in the type of work that we do, especially if it's that steel toe because electricity is always gonna to wanna to find ground and it's gonna find it way much faster. There is that steel toe that is that composite, that it's like a hard plastic, that it is approved for, for us for the type of work we do, which that is fine to use, but just remember the PPE, your boots are part of the PPE. Anything else you would like to add? I would just add that you're gonna be on your feet all day in all weather conditions. You'll be wearing these boots on your very best days and on your very worst days. If you're going to splurge on yourself a little bit, on your boots is a good place to do it. So remember, always do your PPE inspection. And at the end of the day, safety needs to be our main focus. Uh -huh.